Yeah, Though it exactly. is funny, uh, more adults have bought my comic than kids at the moment, but a lot of those adults did also buy it to read with their kids, which was oh, really right. cool. Like I had a professor that ordered a copy of Frankie and he read it with like his two sons and they said they had a blast and they're looking forward to the second one. So that, that like stories like that is like what the book was for because mm -hmm. uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Frankie Boy Monster is about a 12 year old monster boy named Frankie and his mad scientist dad named Dr. Fritz Lang. And they go on misadventures and they fight the real monsters, but at its heart, it's about a single dad and his son. And like, I was raised by my mom. She was a single parent since I was like a year and a half or two. So like, I'm trying to create this story that kind of has the, like that, uh, that I, that I connect with and that I kind of wish was uh, a story that was there for me to connect with when I was little. So I'm kind of trying to create that scene. Like, will anyone else connect with that? That makes sense. That's so cool that you went that avenue. Like that story resonated with me right when you pitched it to me because like I grew up with me and just my dad. And it's been like that since, you know, about the same age, like what you were saying, like it was I was around like, you know, one and a half, two years old. And it's mm -hmm. always just being me and my dad. So like picking up your book, I was like, this looks fun because this is like my story. I am curious, yeah. like on a personal level, like why did you go that route when you especially when you like, you know, I met your mom. She's an amazing woman. You're yeah. very supportive, ah, sure. um, very interactive. Like we even follow yes. each other on Instagram now. She's so sweet she's so uh, yes. like supportive and yes. proud of your work in the community um and so why did you go that route like i'm really curious why you chose the characters like that um well the whole like single parent in the in kid thing like i couldn't shake it uh for a long time like every story i created had that dynamic but i couldn't find mm -hmm. the right i guess genre or the right characters and I kept mm -hmm. searching and searching, you know, sketchbook drawing after sketchbook drawing until I stumbled upon Frankie again. And I revamped it. And I was also kind of like not being honest with myself because my style was starting to evolve into a place that was not unlike a Mike Mignola because he's very shapey and graphic and my art's very shapey and graphic. So I was really nervous that if I did the whole drawing monsters thing, people would just write me off as a Mignola clone. But mm -hmm. when I finally accepted, like, I do like drawing monsters. I do like drawing. I do like drawing, you know pretty stuff occasionally like I, I can draw a decent flower I can draw a decent like white lily or whatever but I do like drawing things with pointy teeth or like with the wonky horns or whatever because you know there are scary things in this world but you know I want I yeah so I, I finally like stopped like lying to myself about what I actually wanted to create genre wise along with a story that's been deep in me for I guess the past like 19 years of my life and they finally collided together into what I'm currently working on that's awesome dude yeah you're i mean it's cool i mean again it's so cool hearing that from someone of your age as well you know what i mean like you're really taking to, to, I get that a lot. to make a story like that dude yeah because to take a story like that and to like comprehend it to like think it through and to find a purpose and the value behind it that that takes a lot I and mean, it usually takes a lot of life experience to be able to convey such like a deep like you know thought out like message at that point too you know what i mean yeah. um i mean and, you know, making comics is not, you know, easy for anyone, no matter what you're doing or how you're doing it. And so you taking a, this upon yourself, you had a goal. You were telling me um, at IC3 that you're talking about the the turtle creators and how yeah. you were, weren't you saying like you were trying to beat their goal. By being published published by 18. My goal is to get published at 18, just like Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Like that was that was the goal since my freshman year of high school. And, uh, you know, I almost gave up, but heroes kind of happened i kept in touch with eli he kept watching me from afar um seeing my artistic growth and then eventually i drew the last page of frankie and he hit me up on that day i drew the last page and he said oh, hey wow. man like do you still need a publisher and uh i got in and yeah it was it was um yeah i mean yeah i i can't like paint a rosy picture because they're like i said i was about to give up but you know the I was reinvigorated what, with the what story. was making you want to give up? Like what, what, what oh, walls were you hitting yeah. to hit that point? Cause I just had made so like, I like before Frankie, I drew about like 60 pages worth of comics and I was just frustrated that I wasn't finding the right story. And, and like my voice was still, I guess, growing. And then I thought like, man, like maybe I should just, you know, like throw in the towel and like let the, let the adults, you know, run amok because you know I, what, what you know i'm just some you know i'm just some kid from tennessee like what what do i have to offer and uh, i just got really discouraged till i actually funny enough like uh oh gosh i'm out to i'm out to uh, jump on the dwj hype train but i met daniel warren johnson at heroes con and i was buying murder falcon from him and i got his minis but the venmo card didn't go all the way through mm -hmm. so he actually gave it to me for free and it's that deluxe image hardcover 
of Murder Falcon. He just he let me have it for free, which oh, that sick. meant a lot. Like not only did that mean a lot, but once I actually finally read the story at home, um, I um, yeah, I read the story. And it, it, you know, if you if you read it, it's about this guitar player named Jake who. Um, sorry, spoilers, but you know, he, uh, oh, yeah. he, he got cancer and he gave up the one thing he loved, he loved for a long time. And he found this, I guess, this spark and this reason to get back on the horse. And then after reading that, I was like, uh, it, it kind of put, it, it kind of kicked me in the butt to, to get back on the horse. Cause then I was also reading the rest of my haul from heroes con. I was like, no, I need to, I need to stick through this. Like, don't give up. Like, and so I just, I, Took a step back from making pages, though. I recreated and remodeled Frankie after I found him again in an old sophomore year sketchbook. And then the idea came out. And then I drew all 24 of those pages in four and a half weeks while working at Dunkin' Donuts over the summer. And then uh, drawing, like, you know, in my off hours and at night and stuff like that. And then it, it came about. And then I colored it the first little bit of uh, this, uh, the first semester of my freshman year. And uh, it hit print in October. So, and oh, my man. birthday was in November the 24th. So I got, I did officially get published in October when I was 18 years old. So I did hit that goal. And, uh, and then, yeah. And then when Eli shipped out the orders, a lot of the people, like all the people that ordered in Tennessee, including my mom, got Frankie Boy Monster on my birthday on November 24th, which was really cool. So. Oh, cool, man. It just, yeah. sounds, I mean, it's one of those things. It sounds like the stars aligned in your favor and like you had yeah. this big stroke of luck and all this stuff, but like you it can, feel you like can definitely time. go down that route, but it's like, dude, there's a lot of hard work that went into that. And to even hear yeah. like at you're, you're working on this, you put all this effort into it and you're just like, I'm, I'm stuck. Like, and that's where a lot of people again stop where they're just like, I'm stuck. I don't know how to, to fight the mental block that you get when you hit that point. And to overcome it and to take a step back and be like, okay, I do want to do this. I do want to set myself up. I do want to make this a future and it hurts right now, but how do I keep going? And then you're rehashing stuff. You're going back to, you know, you're having a magical moment with the creator, which is always one of the coolest things in the world to really inspire you. And then you read a story they create that continues to fuel you. Dude, that's a great, like, that doesn't take any, you know, whatever type of effort that takes a lot of like, you know, self introspection, and just like reanalyzing like your thought process, your mental your capabilities, there's a lot that goes into that mentally and like physically to like push past those barriers, because those barriers could really shut people down. And sometimes yes. that could put a project on hold indefinitely. But or like fighting careers. through that whole careers you're right i've i've talked to creators where similar things have happened and they've hit a wall and then they don't do anything for five ten years and then they jump back and then they're like now i'm finally making comics and that's awesome i love that story but it's yeah. good that you hit that wall and like got shot down and we're stuck and then you're like you know what i just got to reevaluate how i think about this and you know going back to old sketchbooks and ideas and re-inspiring yourself and looking back at like i've worked so hard how can I just pull from what I have and just, like you said, start your story and finish it. And it sounds yeah. like that's where you're hitting and you're pushing and, you know, you get that success, you realize you could do it. It's going to keep coming and happening. It's not your first book. It's not your last yeah. book. It sounds like yeah. you're fueled from here. Oh man, I'm, I'm having a great time. And that doesn't mean like there won't be like small hiatuses where I have to regather my thoughts and like think of the next story. Cause like, I know where I'm going up to issue four, but that's not mm -hmm. the end. Cause I, I'm building up. Cause like, I know where I want this to end, but there's stuff in the middle that I need to explore. And, um, once I get to issue four though, I'm going to have to like, if I don't come up with any, um, with like the next steps by that point, I'm going to have to probably take a, a quick break and, um, and like regather my energy and regap, uh, you know, uh, write some stuff. But I, I keep, I, I keep constantly formulating notes and they keep like, like formulating into newer stories that then kind of, help pave the path to get to where I want to go. So it'll, it'll happen in its own timing, which that's a scary thing in the mm -hmm. sense of like, cause um, people are always asking you, where do you get your inspiration from? But the scary thing for a creator, I feel is like, well, when am I going to get this inspiration? When will, you know, when will, when will the lightning strike me, so to speak? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that light bulb goes off, but I, I actually don't think it's that scary because it's, I think it's all going to come out in its own timing, you know?
Yeah, it's one of those things that like as you continue to work on something and as it's like when you're drawing, it's empty, an empty page when you start and you have a general mm-hmm. idea sometimes. And sometimes you don't even have a general idea and you just start drawing. And as you go, Tony McMillan, again, let's pull him back there. You know, yeah. you, you put a, a splot of ink on the page and then you're just like, so what am I going to make out of the splot of ink? And then just yeah. seeing it where how it runs and like crafting it as it comes sometimes just happens. And you start yeah. opening up avenues, you start seeing the bigger picture and that's when that moment hits you is when you're in the midst of the work. It's rare that the moment hits you when you're just like, like, how, when is it going to happen? How do I find this? Like when you're questioning it, it's like, it's not going to happen. You just got to let yeah. it happen and just push through it. And that's the fun part about making comics. Like I, I compare it the same way you and Tony do is like, it's a giant puzzle piece. Um, yeah. I don't always see all the pieces I need right away. I don't really always understand how the pieces don't are going to fit right away. Cushion. Yeah. And sometimes you just like, oh, it's been here the whole time. And I just had to pull it out and I found it and it completes the puzzle. But it's it's finding how the placements work and rotating pieces until they click in and just tossing some aside because you know it's the wrong piece, but you're gonna try it, try it anyways. And it's the yeah. same thing with comics. It's essentially the same exact thing. You just gotta keep on at it, and you're never gonna finish the puzzle unless you try every piece sometimes and realize oh, yeah. it was the last piece you needed to fit that part. Yeah. 